Black-Nosed Dwarf. Once upon a time, there was a fine, quick-witted lad named Jacob. He was 12 years old and lived with his parents in a small town. His father was a shoemaker, and his mother sold fruit, vegetables, and many kinds of herbs in the market. Jacob was a good boy, and he helped out at the market stall. One day, an ugly old woman hobbled up to the stall. Her nose was very long, and her back was bent. I need some tasty herbs for my soup, she said in her shrill voice. Jacob was curious about the old woman. Why are you disturbing the precious herbs without buying any, he said. If you don't want to buy anything, please go away. You're frightening away all the other customers. Well then, young lad, I will buy five cabbages, she said. But as you can see, I am old and frail. So would you please carry the cabbages home for me? So Jacob picked up the basket and followed the old woman. Soon they reached a shabby little house. Come in, she said. As soon as he stepped into the house, he couldn't believe how beautiful it was inside. As Jacob stood rooted to the spot, looking round, the old woman called to him. Young lad, you have carried the heavy load all this way. You must be hungry. Come into the kitchen. I have some delicious soup for you. The old woman brought him some steaming hot soup in a silver bowl. Jacob sat at the dining table in the kitchen and eagerly tucked into the soup, which tasted wonderful and smelled of strange, unusual herbs and spices. But the more soup he ate, the heavier his limbs became. No sooner had he put the last spoonful to his lips than his tired eyelids drooped and he fell fast asleep at the table. was bustling with busy little squirrels, some wearing funny green trousers and caps, others with white aprons. Some were busy stirring soup, others were washing dishes and cutlery. They chatted happily to each other as they worked. Then he dreamt that he was working as head cook for the old woman. In his dream, Jacob was an adventurous cook and wanted to try out a new recipe, so he looked in the cupboard for the right herbs. Soon he came to a bunch of herbs that he had never seen before. It smelled of the herbs in the soup that he had eaten on the day he arrived. As Jacob breathed in the wonderful aroma, he woke up. He sat up, stretched out and mumbled to himself, well, that was the strangest of dreams, and, and it seemed to last so long. Now I must go back home to my parents. So Jacob made his way to his father's shoemakers. His father and his assistant welcomed him politely, as a shopkeeper might usually greet a customer. Jacob thought this was strange and asked about his family. I had a son, sighed his father. But he was taken away by an old witch seven years ago. Anyway, wouldn't you like us to make you a leather cover for your long nose? Winter will soon be here. Jacob touched his nose in alarm. It felt huge. Jacob was so upset about his nose that he rushed straight to the barber's. When Jacob looked in the mirror, he saw an ugly dwarf with a long nose. Oh, no! He almost fell off his chair from shock. Now he realized that he hadn't been dreaming, but he had been under the old woman's spell and had worked for her for seven whole years. Suddenly he had an idea. He remembered that the Duke of Baravia loved fine food and that the best cooks in the land were in his service. Jacob had had seven years' practice at cooking and he was confident that he could do a good job. So, with a spring in his step, he set off for the Duke's castle. He reached the castle early in the morning. The butler directed the dwarf to the head cook. He was very strict. First he had a good look at the dwarf, 
and asked him about ancient recipes and combinations of spices. When he realized that the dwarf knew all the answers, he began to respect the little man. At that moment, the duke called for his breakfast. The head cook ordered the dwarf to prepare the breakfast, and Jacob did it perfectly. As usual, a castle servant served the duke with his breakfast. When the duke had finished eating, he sent for the head cook. The cook was terrified. Before he went to the duke, he paced around in the kitchens. If the duke didn't like his breakfast, then I'll be to blame. He might even throw me in the castle dungeons, he muttered to himself. Eventually, the head cook plucked up the courage and crept into the dining hall. But the duke noticed him and called out to him in a jolly manner. I have never tasted such a delicious breakfast, he said. Who prepared the breakfast today? I would like to reward him. Well, your highness, it was none of us. It was a dwarf who wishes to serve you as a cook. The duke sent for him and thanked him. You may not be pretty to look at, but as far as cooking is concerned, there's no one to beat you. From today, you will work at this castle, and from now on, I shall call you Big Nosed Dwarf. Here is a gold coin as a reward for the excellent breakfast. The Duke was very happy with his new cook. Big Nosed Dwarf cooked one dish after another. Savory, sweet, fancy or simple, whatever dish the Duke demanded, the little dwarf could make it. And he never served the same dish twice. Soon his fame spread beyond the castle walls. One day, Big Nosed Dwarf went to the market and bought three fat geese. He planned to cook them for the Duke's special birthday banquet. On the way back to the castle, one of the geese began to speak, tearfully. Dear Big Nosed Dwarf, please don't kill me. I am an enchanted maiden named Mimi. The startled dwarf comforted her. Dear Mimi, please don't worry. I will set up a cage in my room where you can live without fear. The dwarf also felt sorry for the other two geese, so he let them go free. When he reached his room, Mimi told him all about herself. I am the daughter of a wizard who argued with a witch, she said. Because of this, the witch kidnapped me, changed me into a goose and sent me far away. Then Big Nose Dwarf told her about his own fate. If you can find the herb that was in the old woman's soup, said Mimi, you can be set free from the spell. Big Nose Dwarf pricked up his ears, but unfortunately he did not know where he could find the herb. One day, the prince of a neighboring country visited the duke. The duke wanted to show off to the prince. He wanted him to see that the food served in his castle was the very best. So he commanded Big Nose Dwarf to bring the most delicious dishes to the table. The prince was absolutely delighted with the wonderful meals that were served, and so 14 days went by. On the 15th day, the prince said to the duke, Your cook, Big Nose Dwarf, really is very imaginative, but so far I have not had the chance to taste my favorite dish, Baravian pie. I am surprised that I have not been offered this popular dish. The Duke was embarrassed. He sent for Big Nose Dwarf at once. You have not served Boravian pie yet. Why not? Don't you know how to make it? The Dwarf had never heard of that dish before, but he managed to talk himself out of the situation. One of the servants told me that it was the Prince's favorite dish, he said. So I wanted to serve it on the prince's last day here, as part of a very special banquet. The duke was satisfied with his answer, and he commanded him to serve Boravian pie on the following day. Big Nosed Dwarf returned to his room. Immediately, Mimi noticed that something was wrong. Dear Big Nosed Dwarf, you look upset. What has happened? she asked. Big Nosed Dwarf told her all about it. He wants me to make Boravian pie. Well, I've never heard of it. Oh, what am I going to do? This will be the end of me, he said. Don't worry, Mimi comforted him. At home, we often used to have this pie, and I know exactly how to make it. It isn't difficult. Big Nose Dwarf felt so happy, it was as if a heavy weight had been lifted from his heart. He was saved. The next day was the prince's last day at the castle, 
So Big Nose Dwarf was up early in the morning preparing a great banquet with Boravian pie as the main dish. When the pie was ready, the castle servants carried it into the dining room. The prince took one mouthful and the servants looked on, desperately hoping that he would like it. After a long pause, he cried out, This pie tasted much better at home. It just can't be the same recipe. The duke, feeling deeply disgraced and upset, flew into a rage and commanded his servants to call the big-nosed dwarf from the kitchens. You have seriously disappointed the prince with your cooking, he thundered. Big-nosed dwarf fell on his knees before the prince and begged him tearfully, Take pity on me, sir, and tell me what I did wrong. My dear big-nosed dwarf, said the prince, there is one particular herb which must be in the pie to make it absolutely perfect. Well, just give me one more day and I will make a pie for you with the herb in it, said the dwarf. The duke nodded to him graciously and let him go. As he walked away, he shouted after him, If you fail to make the pie exactly as the prince likes it by tomorrow, I will have you beheaded. Big Nose Dwarf ran straight to Mimi in his room and told her what had happened. Don't worry, she comforted him. The herb only grows under old chestnut trees. Is there an old chestnut tree in the castle gardens? Big Nose Dwarf told her there was. They both hurried to the chestnut trees in the castle grounds. Mimi worked hard, digging at the roots of an ancient tree with her bill. At last she cried out with delight, I've got it! There's plenty of the herb here! Big Nose Dwarf took a bunch in his hand and sniffed at it. Strangely enough, the herb's aroma reminded him of the old woman's soup. Come, there's no time to waste. We must quickly get back to the room before the guards do their rounds, warned Mimi. Back in his room, Big Nose Dwarf smelled at the herb again and again, taking deep breaths. And would you believe it? Suddenly he began to grow and grow and his nose became smaller and smaller until he had turned into a fine, handsome young man. Mimi cried out with joy. Jacob gave an elegant bow before Mimi and said, My dear Mimi, I owe everything to you. Now I wish to do something for you. Let us go straight away to your father and see if he can release you from the spell. That night, Jacob slipped away from the castle with Mimi and set out for the home of Mimi's father. When they got there, Jacob told Mimi's father, the wizard, what had happened to them both. Moved to tears, he thanked Jacob and turned to his daughter. All those years ago, he said, the witch told me that I could only break the spell if a handsome man fell in love with you. He could see that they were both deeply in love, and he changed his daughter back into a beautiful maiden. One evening, just as Jacob's parents were having supper, there was a knock at the door. When the mother opened the door, she saw a smiling, distinguished young man. She immediately recognized her long-lost Jacob. She cried out with joy and, sobbing, took him in her arms. His father also hurried over to him and shed tears of joy over their reunion. Jacob introduced his future wife, Mimi, to his parents, and they loved her from the moment they met her. Jacob bought an inn in the town, and there he cooked the most delicious dishes. People from miles around flocked to taste his wonderful food. He became rich and famous and married Mimi, and they lived happily and contentedly ever after. <laughs>